Okay, so in this um, short video, I'm just going to discuss how to make a um, biosensor for things like um, antigens or um, things like proteins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to describe that at Zimmer and Peacock, we're um, fairly keen on um, making biosensors using the glucose strip model. So I'll just... Um... And the reason we quite like the glucose strip model is because glucose strips have offer a very low cost way of uh, manufacturing. They're fairly easy to manufacture at volume. They actually require tiny amounts of sample and um, for certain assays, it can be quite quick. So for example, there my um, glucose level is 5.9 millimolar um, or millimoles rather. Um, and yeah, the whole thing was quite you know easy and, and simple to do. Now, if we peel back this glucose sensor, what we're gonna find uh, underneath it is um, what's really a series of um, conductive tracks. And these conductive tracks form an electrochemical um, cell. And on there, there's a biological recognition molecule, um, which is probably, um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a glucose um, enzyme. Now, in order to form that microfluidic chamber, so you saw that my um, you saw that my blood was um, sucked into a chamber. They have a um, sort of some laminate materials, which when they stick on top of the um, glucose sensor, they then form um, the chamber. So if I bring that up now. These kind of um, sample volumes could be as small as 300 nanoliters, you know, so they're really quite um, small. So the nice thing about electrochemical glucose sensor or electrochemical biosensors in general is they really don't need much sample in order to um, operate. They could be quite small. Now, we do understand at Zimmer and Peacock actually that nobody needs a, another, particularly needs another glucose strip for doing blood glucose monitoring. So what we have is um, we take all the we take many of the principles from the um, glucose strip world, but we manufacture um, screen printed electrodes, maybe a carbon one and maybe a gold one. And if you're looking for these electrodes, then I often refer to these as that's the carbon three hundred three and that's the gold three hundred three, and they're important because um, from these substrates people can um, develop and maybe even manufacture their own um, biosensor. So now let's say, okay, if we sketch out these 303 electrodes, they have a um, gold electrode on them. Um, for example, they have a counter electrode on them. And then they have a reference electrode on them. Now I'm only gonna really focus it on the reference, just for your interest. Um, wraps around um, the working electrode. So now let's just focus in on the working electrode. So I think it's fairly straightforward to get some proof of principle work done on a screen printed electrode, even if your target is something like a protein. So for example, if you were working with ZP or you had ZP screen printed electrodes, I'd be saying, take that gold electrode, immobilize onto the surface the antibody of interest um, and you would then be advised by us for example to put a blocking layer on there so that blocking layer might be BSA bovine serum albumin and we might also teach you how to do the deposition of a reporting molecule that later on will become important to the assay so the next in some ways, that's the sensor made. It's take the um, take one of the gold screen printed electrodes. So take one of these guys. Um, we would want you to um, functionalize the surface, but with your antibody, we would. You know, if you were asked how to do that, we would tell you about the gold surface and tell you about forming a thiol layer. And then the thiol layer, we could couple your 
antibody to the other end of the thiol. This is called SAM chemistry self-assemble monolayer. It's really well documented. It's decades old and it's fairly robust. It kind of works quite often. So we would teach you about, uh, we'll talk to you at least about um, putting down the antibody, putting down maybe a, a blocking layer to stop what's called non-specific binding, maybe how to put down the reporting molecules. And then you would put your sample onto the sensor and your protein of interest would maybe specifically bind and it would effectively affect the surface. Now, your question would be, well, how do I actually know or how can I see all that is going on? The nice thing about electrochemistry, there's lots of techniques. So we would advise you that there's actually lots of ways of doing this. But one way of doing it, for example, is you would have a technique called cyclovoltammetry, um, which has what they call a, yeah, has a CV. And upon binding, the signal would change to look something more like this. And the difference between these two from going from the from the blue line to the red line would be an indication of the amount of binding. You could actually interrogate that kind of binding also using um, a technique like um, impedance spectroscopy. So you see something sometimes in the literature literature called the Nyquist plot, which would be this would be the Nyquist plot for example for an unbound surface and then upon binding you might get a new Nyquist plot and that would be the sort of binding or the signal, the raw signal for a binding. Now, of course, you're never going to display these raw signals to your actual customers, you know, your doctors, your clinicians, your nurses, your your patients. But, you know, there is a raw, you know, but when you're in your R&D phase and you will be seeing these kind of raw signals. So if I was to summarize um, what we like to do at Zimmer and Peacock, we think this is a cool technology. There, um, the electronics can be low cost, the sensors themselves can be low cost, but we understand that nobody needs another blood glucose strip, but we can take those kind of principles and put them into some standardized sort of geometries. And then people can take the surfaces or they can work with Zimmer and Peacock and we can functionalize the surfaces for things that are fairly simple to do, like potassium and sodium or more, hot, more, more complicated to do, which would be um, protein detection, where you need to immobilize uh, the antibodies onto the surface and you might need to use um, blocking uh, molecules like bovine serum and albumin. Um, and then you would basically get the binding assay done and the signal would change as a function of binding. And as I say, there's lots of techniques one of them would be cyclovoltammetry and the other one would be, for example, impedance spectroscopy. But these are fairly well-known, defined techniques. And the real innovation comes then from choosing your application of interest and the kind of within the application of interest, the analyte of interest. OK, so if you have any questions regarding um, biosensor development, especially if you're very interested in going to the market, then please don't hesitate to contact us at Zimmer and Peacock. All right. Thanks very much.